All right. Bill and Chris, welcome to Fandango Frontrunners. Happy Thanks to be here. Thanks a lot. You will see two orange chairs. Oh, yeah. Those are the frontrunner chairs. Oh, man. Look at this. Taking over this entire movie theater. <laughs> Just for you. Yeah. Chris and Phil, welcome to Fandango Frontrunners. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks for having us. I vividly remember walking into the screening of the Lego movie and thinking to myself, there's probably nothing for me here, but hopefully I'll find some fun moments. Right. Cut That's to, a terrible attitude I know. <laughs> to go into a screening. Cut with. to right now, it's one of my two or three favorite movies of 2014, no question. Oh, wow. Thank, Thank you. Do you guys feel like low expectations from some people were kind of your best friend for this movie? They have been our best friend in, throughout our career. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, everything we've done from Clyde with a Chance of Meatballs to 21 Jump Street to doing 22 Jump Street and Lego Movie have all been... Oh, I don't know. That sounds like a bad idea. Yeah, if you ever walk into a screening of a, something we've made with high expectations, you know that the fall is about to happen. So why are your ideas so horrible? It's like how uh, some women are attracted to, like, bad boys. Mm. Like, we're only attracted to, like, <laughs> really hard. bad ideas. Bro yeah. broken, really hard, broken birds. Broken birds. Yeah, exactly. We nursed. can save them. We can <laughs> save these ideas. Right now, you're at this incredible moment with the success of LEGO, with the success of the Jump Street movies. But take me back a little bit. Was there a moment earlier on where you guys had a feeling that you could be on to something really special? When we were in college together, uh, we both made these student animated films and we were helping each other out uh, and spending our entire lives making these, these dumb little shorts. Um, through a series of comical misunderstandings, uh, I ended up getting a call in my dorm room from an executive at Disney who had seen an article that was written about me in the Dartmouth Alumni Magazine. It claimed that I had like designed the dinosaurs for the new Star Wars prequels. I hope you ran and, with that. And I, the fact that they didn't have dinosaurs and I had nothing to do with that was... <laughs> and no, what they I say said, to that? You'd be so rich I said, now. yeah, my buddy and I were going to graduate. We've been making these films. I'll send them to you and we'll meet. We're planning on moving out to L.A. anyway and seeing if we can make a go of it. We'll meet then. But then after I hung up, I was like, wow, maybe... Maybe it might work. <laughs> what about you, Phil? What moment sticks out as a moment that you thought you could make it? When I was younger, um, they ran out of books in the elementary school that I went to. So our reading group had read through the sixth grade Ran books. out of books, people ate them? Yeah. They ate them. <laughs> yeah, it was a dystopian past. There's a lot of dystopian futures, but this is a dystopian past that I lived in where there was no food and only books to eat. Um, but, the, uh, but they ran out of books, and so they didn't know what to do with us, so they gave us a video camera that the librarian had, and we were um, making our own comic books, me and a couple of friends. There was a character named uh, Captain uh, Sissy Mafil, which was an acronym for sure, I'll solve your mystery for you, little lady. And anyway, that was the main hero, and we made a commercial for the, the comic books. The comic books were not very good, but the commercial was fairly impressive. Okay. So now is the time in the show where we look at a scene from the Lego movie okay. together, and we'll pause it and talk about all the great right. moments. This is near the beginning of the movie where we really learn about Emmett, the main character, mm -hmm. and life in Bricksburg, mm -hmm. scored to the fantastic song, Everything is Awesome. So let's take a look. Oh my gosh, I love this song. Everything is awesome. And I'm stopping already. <laughs> because so much, so much has already happened. I'm a huge... <laughs> Tegan and Sarah fan, so oh, I cool. personally am not sick of Everything is Awesome. <laughs> You're I, the one. Are you not sick of it? I'm enjoying it more now than ever. Because, because why? Well, we wrote this line in the script five years ago that was like, there will be a song called Everything is Awesome, and it will be a horrible song, <gasps> but it will be so catchy that you can't stop singing it, and then actually it will get really popular. Like the essence of pop. Well said. Now, we're looking at this crazy shot here, which I <laughs> yes. have to imagine is one of the most elaborate seconds in the entire <laughs> yeah, movie. Like it's that. a lot, yeah, I know. It's like a, like 10,000 cars on a giant freeway. And even like there's some on the bottom of the screen that's a little blurry and then some that's more in focus. I mean, oh, this yeah, is a lot of work Oh yeah, the shallow depth here. of field was a really complicated thing because when you're doing miniature photography, it's really hard to keep, you know, everything in focus and and when you're doing something in 3d it's really nice to keep everything in focus because you can look around the screen but it doesn't look real we want to make sure it looked like something you could really do at home if you had that many lego bricks and you had uh, a really good lighting team <laughs> that you could make it yourself and so um 
it was really important to us that we had a shallow depth of field and it was a little bit of a fight but I'm glad that I'm glad that we were able to pull it off I love it let's keep going Everything is awesome. always use a turn signal now I love the turn signal because <laughs> it has this stop motion feel to it and I have read that you guys were really into combining kind of like a low and a high method of animation in this movie, yeah. which is, I think, part of the charm. Part of the, the joy for us was, like, here's, we're using the most sophisticated technology in the history of cinema, right? <laughs> <laughs> all this, like, incredible uh, rendering software, software and all this stuff. But the, the animation that's going on is literally just replacing a clear-colored brick with an amber-colored brick back and forth, which is the simplest possible solution. So a big thing with the animators was conveying to them the idea that we should go for the dumbest possible solution whenever possible. So we could never do stuff that you could do in CG, like bend the arms of the characters. They had to stay stiff mm. because we were more interested in how you would solve the problem of like, how do you, like, you can't drink They can't clap something. their hands. They can't right, like right, get yeah. the thing up to their face. They can't clap. So they do stuff like this. I see. Okay. Park between the lines. Yes. Drop off dry cleaning before noon. Read the headlines. Now, with something like that where it's read the headlines and you have all those different banners, do you guys put little Easter eggs in, little secret jokes? Many. We do. We do. There are many. They're all throughout the movie. The one regret that I have that we talked about that, thank goodness we're making a sequel, is we were going to embed subliminal messages that were incredibly, instead of being satanic, were going to be like really positive. super positive. Yeah, like, like what? Listen to your parents, like do your homework. <laughs> like, because we were like, well, we're making this thing for kids and it's with this, you know, this toy that really is so good for kids' brains. Like, let's make a movie that's got like great positive messages. Why throughout. didn't you do it? <laughs> well, we, we got busy. <laughs> okay. Don't forget to smile. Always root for the local sports team. Go sports team! Always return a compliment. Hey, you look nice. So do you. When I saw this for the first time, I felt like the jokes were just whizzing past <laughs> yeah, me I know. in the best possible way. <laughs> and it was the rare case when as soon as it was over, I said to myself, I cannot wait to see this again. Was that part of your goal to have it go that fast and furious? Well, we're always kind of embarrassed about our jokes, especially if we go, here's a joke. <laughs> right. Yeah, and you then, don't want to just like put a big pause for laugh afterwards. <laughs> right. Um, and we wanted to do something that would reward you multiple viewings, and so uh, that was sort of part of the philosophy of the whole thing. Here's the end of the scene. Drink overpriced coffee. There you go. That's thirty-seven dollars. Wow, awesome. You know, we have to talk about Chris Pratt because I feel like so he was such a great best. teammate for you, and all of his inflections are so energetic and charming. It must have been fun to watch him do it. You know, we, we've known him and have been a fan of him for a long time. We worked with his wife, Anna, on Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. Uh, but he was always such a positive guy and such like a, just like a, a happy person who always made us laugh. And we were thinking of this character was, we were like, well, it's kind of like Chris Pratt. And he, we were lucky. And at that did. time, it was like, you think they'll let him star in a movie. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and now he's like literally the hottest movie star in the business. And it was really obvious, you know, the way we cast these things is we cut together clips of people from shows and things like that, just audio, and we listen to it. And so it was really evident from Chris's audition, which he didn't know he was auditioning, right. that it was that he had to be the guy. Well, for two guys who are known for having horrible ideas, that was a great That was idea. a good one. <laughs> that turned out to be really good. He's had I, a pretty good year congratulate you on this movie. I hope the Academy takes note of it as much as I have and as much as the whole world has, so very well done. Oh, thank, thank you so you much. Very Thanks much. so much for being here. Now, if you haven't already seen the Lego movie, be sure to check it out. Thanks so much to the TCL Chinese Theater for having us here today, and thank you for watching Fandango Frontrunners. To say thank you, we have made each of you your own Fandango Lego movie gift card. So, I love wow. that. Thank you thank so you. much. Oh, that's very kind of that's you. That's wonderful. Thanks Thank you so much. much. So now we do a picture over here. Yeah, sure. All right, I'm going to count to three, and then I'm going to push it. One, two, three. Yes. <laughs> I love it. it. Thanks, guys. It.